Hey guys, it's April 20th, uh, 2021. Um, something you're gonna hear oh, talking about a lot lately is splitting, uh, especially to prevent swarms. Um, we've already been seeing reports of, uh, you know, healthy adult drones coming out of hives. Um, I saw a photo that looked like swarm scouts outside of a swarm trap um, on Facebook last week. So you're gonna hear us talking a lot about making splits, especially with strong overwintered colonies. Uh, and there's a, a, a lot of different reasons you might wanna make a split or a nuke. You know, we, we use both of those terms kind of interchangeably, but what I'm talking about right now is gonna strictly be for swarm prevention. So this is a very strong overwintered hive. Um, we got a great honey crop out of them last year. Um, we've already been in this hive today, so I know that there are nine frames of brood in here. Um, capped in open, open worker brood. So a very strong colony. Um, they're not making swarm cells yet, but I want to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, I don't want to be caught unaware. So we're going to go in, take the old queen out, put her, make a split with her, and then we can either, we could let them raise their own queen, or we can add a purchased mated queen. Um, you know, that all depends on what your, what your end goal is for the split. Okay, so here's our nuke box, and you can see I've already started populating with the frames that we took out of our full hive here. Um, starting at this outer wall, this is a frame of honey, uh, honey and nectar. These next two frames are both almost completely capped brood. Uh, there's some open brood on there. This is a third frame of brood, and as you can see, if you can see in the middle there, there's our queen. She's marked silver. Um, We've got, there's eggs in this frame. Um, there's some capped worker brood. And you can see there's a band of pollen in here. And pretty much the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna put this frame in the center and I'm gonna make sure that I don't squash this queen when I put my next frame in. So I'm gonna have her on the frame that's gonna slide right up against this one. And then our final frame here also has some, some uh, open brood on it and another nice cap of a uh, nice band of pollen. And there is a little capped honey also on this side. So again, I know my queen is between these two frames, so I'm not gonna risk crushing her when I slide this frame in. So now I'm just gonna scooch those both toward the center. So again, the middle three frames are where my brood is, and I want those in the center to keep them warm. And they're gonna have honey and nectar on this side, um, mostly pollen with a little bit of nectar on that side. And the final thing I'm gonna do is just shake a frame of nurse bees in here. So when you make a split like this, one of the risks is that you might have some foragers in here. So when you move this box now, the foragers will go back to the original colony. So because we don't want this hive to be depleted, we're gonna shake in some extra nurse bees. Nurse bees haven't flown out, they haven't been foraging yet, so they're gonna be a lot more likely to stay, stay in this box with these bees. This is a little landing board method I do when I shake or a, a nuke box. And that's it. So again, we've got our three brood frames, our food frames, my queen is in here. So now the original hive is gonna be under the impression that they've swarmed because they've lost a large amount of brood. They've lost their queen. We've added a lot of open, um, open drawn comb in here. So that should really reduce 
the swarm impulse in this hive. Our brood frames out. We took the queen out. Now this is what's left of the bottom box where we pulled our frames. Um, so these outer frames are just some nectar and stored honey. Now these are all the frames that still had brood on them. So we're going to push those all toward the center. We don't want them out toward the sides, you know, the side walls of the box because it's still, you know, right now when we're making this video, it's uh, the third week of all. April so we still have some cool temperatures coming so we're gonna now put drawn comb in, in these frames this has some uh, some foundationless drone comb that we use for um, drone comb removal and then we're just going to continue filling this empty slot with drawn comb and we're using drawn comb here because we're doing this as swarm prevention. So we want to make sure that the new queen is going to have plenty of room to lay. We don't want to put foundation in here because that doesn't help them right now. They're going to still have to obviously draw that comb out. Um, I mean if that's all you have that's what you use but since we have drawn comb that's what we're going to use. Okay so this is the split. It's all made up. It's in its new location. Um, we took the old overwintered queen out we put her in this box so this is essentially a swarm it's an artificial swarm that we've created um, so now this we can either let this build up make a full hive out of it um, you know I could add a second story you know if you've ever seen Mike Palmer he, he does three four stories we could keep this on hand use it for um, resources pull frames of brood out if other hives are a little weak um, or just use it as a spare queen. So if one of our other queens in our full hives ends up having an issue, instead of having to scramble buy a queen, you know, or let them raise a queen and lose all that production, we can just take this queen out of here. We know she's mated, we know she's laying. Um, and when you introduce a queen from a nuke, uh, it tends to be a much uh, simpler introduction than maybe a, a, a cage queen who she hasn't been laying for, you know, days or weeks. Um, you know there can be acceptance issues this queen is laying right now we can take this whole nuke take five frames out of a you know a full hive and drop this whole nuke in there um, and the acceptance on that is usually really good um, because she's laying currently so she's got that full bouquet of queen pheromones about her um, so for the the hive we took her out of now there were no swarm cells in that hive today um, if I wanted to let them raise a queen, they probably still will from, you know, there, there were eggs and larvae in there. So they have the resources if they want to draw one of those out. Um, that's an emergency cell because they hadn't already started as part of the swarm impulse. Um, you know, there's some debate on whether those are the best quality queens or not. Um, but for what my purpose is, I'm going to add a mated queen to that hive. So. Normally I would have waited to do this when there are already queen cells um, in evidence and that's, you know, that's part of our, our swarm prevention. Um, because there were no queen cells, this is a, a preemptive strike against a swarm, uh, but then we're going to add a mated cage queen. 